Well, hey, everybody. Happy Friday to you. Um, I'm going to go back to a post I did on Monday and just now ask you how well you did on your homework since then. Where did you do nothing? Where did you rest? Where did your schedule not allow it, but you carved out time for yourself just to be replenished? You were supposed to do that, remember? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you may have missed Monday's Daily Dose. If that's the case, stop this. Pause this. You can scroll down right now. You can go back four or five and see Monday, Chris Brown. Watch it. It's where we looked at the life of Jesus who said, look, you've got to take naps. You're going to be tired. You've got to find solitude. You've got to get away from the crowd. Did you do that this week? We're able to replenish. We're able to rejuvenate a little bit. Man, I, I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, let me show you how that worked in the life of Jesus a little bit because we're coming up to a weekend. Maybe your weekend like mine, uh, we work weekends. Weekends are where we get busier than any time, any place else. But there's still time to say, where have you done something just for you? It's the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. It's Mark chapter 1. He's trying to reach everyone. The crowds are now starting to figure out who he is and what he's about. Mark chapter 1 simply says he stayed up all night, late into the evening, healing those that were sick and demon-possessed, those that needed medical attention, those that needed healing. And watch what happens at the end of Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everybody is looking for you. And Jesus replied, Let's go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That, circle, highlight, underline, that is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. I love this end to chapter one. I mean, just step back and think in context. Jesus has just set on the scene. He's now telling people who he is. He's had the power, the miracles. He stayed up all night healing people that were sick and diseased and demon possessed. The day before he was teaching in the synagogue and a demon possessed man shrieked out and he healed him. I mean, things now have gone full tilt in this opening chapter of Jesus' ministry. So he gets up long before dawn and he goes out to a solitary place and he prays. By the time the disciples wake up, there's knocking on the door. There's crowd outside. There's commotion. Everyone has heard there's a miracle worker. Everyone has heard maybe this Messiah, this Christ that the Jewish nation has been waiting for has appeared. So everybody wants a piece of him. They go out and find him and they tell him the entire town has gathered at the door. Man, isn't that what you want? Don't you want to start something and have so much success that everybody buys in at the beginning? Especially in ministry. If you're a church planner as this guy is, don't you want to start something and do it well enough in such a way where pretty soon that fame and attention spreads? And then Jesus' response is just mind-blowing considering this is chapter 1. Wow. Let's go somewhere else. I've come to teach. And I can't get caught up in the crowds. I can't get caught up in the lines of people. But what you don't understand, Jesus, people have brought their sons and daughters who haven't been able to walk their entire life. People have brought their loved ones who are blind. People have brought family members that have been hurt in accidents. And in first century medical conditions, there's been no cure, no help. And you can straighten limbs. You can heal bones. You can open eyes. Who's going to go back and tell the father carrying his nine-year-old daughter that Jesus doesn't have time for him. This is very un-Jesus-like. And yet in chapter 1, Jesus goes back to what I challenge you to do on Monday. You cannot let your schedule and the crowd and the company dictate who you are. Because the crowd will always own you. The company will always own you. People will always take everything you have to offer and leave you with nothing. They're not evil. They're not ill-willed. They just all want time and attention and in that break, in that solitude, in that rest, something happened. Jesus knew who he was, what he was supposed to do, and where to do it. When you and I spend time with God, when you and I can get out of our agenda, we find clearer who we are, what we're supposed to do, and where to do it. When I can get down everything externally that is trying to control me and get back to a God who I'm supposed to be under the control under, Things get simpler. Congratulations, it's the weekend. Find time to be selfish, and by that I mean spiritual, and find time to get away and get ready.